Now it's been a minute since I have taken the time to really get on here and have a Steve Nash conversation. It really has been a minute because there's been so many other things afoot. And you know, in the video we posted earlier today where we were all excited about Kyrie Irving coming back and being full-time and how the league needs to be on notice, I forgot one very, very, very important factor. I tried to sprinkle in some Ben Simmons commentary. I didn't really say much about South Curry, but you know, there, there, there were other things afoot that I left out. There were. And tonight we saw an example of the thing that we, we I don't know about y'all, but I know I, in particular, forgot to factor in when we talk about Kyrie being full-time yet again. We forgot Steve Nash as the coach. Now listen, Nets Republic is a wonderful, wonderful brand. And I want everyone to know that. Very family friendly, very love a dub dub, scrub a dub dub, all that wonderful stuff. But I need you to understand that everything I'm going to say over the next however long this video is recording is several of Bond's thoughts. I will preface this video by saying if you have anyone who is of a younger demographic who, you know, if you wouldn't let them courtside when Kevin Garnett's playing, you probably shouldn't let him watch this video because I am through. I'm, 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 mm, Steve Nash. I want this man fired. I want him dragged out the Barclays. I don't want any type of a situation to where it's like, oh, you know, you're not doing well here. Maybe you can be an assistant coach. I want him gone. There is absolutely no excuse for being gifted a full-time Kyrie Irving on his birthday. And you know what type of emotional bum this man is, where if the chakras are right, if the stars are aligned, if, 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 if Mercury is in retrograde, I mean, like, what spiritual, amazing type energy do you need to have more? Then on his birthday, on the day that he's basically guaranteed to play full time, you have Avatar State Kai. The man still had 45 and got fouled up and down the court the entire game. And you have Kevin Durant. You have both of those individuals. You have watched their shortcomings. You know what they're capable of. You know what they're not. I'm going to say a lot of stuff that is going to annoy a lot of people, but this stuff needs to be said. And y'all need to hear me. And I'm tired of sugarcoating it. Y'all need to hear me. Because it's just, it's just despicable how it all comes together. Now, Kevin Durant is trying his hardest to make the most out of a terrible situation. It's like if you've got social anxiety and you get the wrong order from, from, from the restaurant you went to. You don't want to go back in there and be like, um, actually, it was a side of fries. You gave me a corn dog. You don't want to do that because you've got social anxiety. So you're sitting there just trying to make most of this corn dog knowing you had on your taste buds, you wanted some french fries. You're trying to make the most of it. That is what Kevin Durant is doing with this. And I've said it nine million times, but I'm about to upgrade Band-Aids to paper clips in a second. This band-aid blank crew that we have, which is just an assortment of failures and tragedy and all sorts of nasty shenanigans that is this season. Looking at James Johnson and saying, yes, this is a suitable replacement for Jeff Green was the beginning of the end. Getting absolutely nothing for Spencer Dinwiddie. Getting absolutely nothing for DeAndre Jordan. Getting absolutely nothing for Landry Shamit. And I say absolutely nothing because when was the last time y'all saw Dayron Sharp play? Exactly. So we got nothing for that. And we're having to deal with the pieces we have left behind. And Kevin Durant is doing the best with what he has. Now, Kyrie could not have played any better. So I, 
there's, a, there's no blame to shift on him. But let's take simple things for a second. If you know Kevin Durant is only able to do but so much. I mean, the man is incredible. The man is the best basketball player on the planet. The man is the current MVP, but he's only capable of doing so much. Let's use an example of the bum we just saw. If you've got John Morant's blankety blank self, and oh, I'm censoring myself so strong right now. If you've got John Morant's raggedy self sitting there out there and it's a three point game, you know, maybe he'll hit the shot, but it's like, you know, he's not really a shooter like that. Maybe there's some type of action you can get for him to slash over to the rim and get the and one, and that's how he gets the three points. Or maybe a driving kick to someone who can hit the shot, like that JJ the Jet plan plane looking man they got over there but that's not you know there like maybe it could be a driving kick situation to get someone else open regardless you are aware of the of the of the of the of the you're aware of who you have in your personnel and you try to run things and you try to run the offense in a way that caters to who you have this idea that Steve Nash is pushing ISO Kevin Durant so hard that it's pushing him past his limits you are pushing the best basketball player in the world past his limits. How many times are we watching KD run into the paint? There's a boot, 15 dudes on him. He tries to bring the ball back up to look around and see who to pass to, but the ball never makes it back up because they strip him of the ball, turnover, fast break, dunk, wrap. We have seen that at least 80 consecutive times over the last three games. Now, I haven't said anything because they've been winning, and that is the definition of a dub is a dub. When they're winning games, it really doesn't matter how bad they're looking because they're winning games. So what can I really say? I can complain about general things of, well, we got lucky, but at least we won. But specific things, I just look like a jerk. But when we lose, we can bring these things up. But what does that spawn from? Is that a knock on Kevin Durant for not being able to do everything? No, it's not. That is a knock. That is a knock on Mr. Steve Nash. We're talking about crunch time minutes, and you've got Kyrie Irving out there, exhausted, Kevin Durant out there, exhausted, Patty Mills out there, exhausted, Bruce Brown, who all he does is cut, and Claxton, exhausted. We're stretching. What? What? Maybe he didn't play. Maybe he wasn't healthy and he couldn't play. I'll give Steve Nash that. I'll give Steve Nash that. Now, there's no excuse for no Blake Griffin. Again, another ball handler who can handle the ball. And if you're sitting there say, saying, Sammer, he can't handle the ball, you're a casual. Another ball handler who can go out there, maybe, maybe, maybe draw some quick attention or something like that. Like there are there are other alternatives that this man could have gone with. And I'm looking, I'm looking this way because I feel like if I if I take a moment to have an aside on camera, I can calm myself down because I'm this close to losing my job and I'm trying to I'm trying to maintain it. I'm enjoying doing Nets videos over here and on my main channel, so I want to keep that going. So I'm trying to calm myself down over here. So you know what? I'll give you, I'll give you maybe Drogic wasn't an option because I don't think the man was even suited up and ready to go. So I'll give you that. Cool, 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 cool. I won't get on Steve Nash for that. That was like a, 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 a bridge to the main rant. So I'll give you that. Maybe, maybe that particular point is nothing I can fault Steve Nash for. But you know what I can fault this man for? The general overarching point of everything I've been saying, the general overarching point of everything I've been trying to come across this example of having to use your Gundam, this, this, this example of having to use the tools at your disposal to get what you need to get done. Now, obviously, the Brooklyn Nets do not play defense. Is that Steve Nash's fault? Technically, but he was not given the proper materials. Oh, wait, we've got Andre Drummond. Okay, well, maybe he was. I'm, I'm, I'm choosing to not, I'm choosing to not put that on him because that has been the identity of the team for the last two years. So cool. I will not put that, I can, but I won't put that on him. It's not his fault. Our game plan and our objective and why I said in the previous video it's over because we only have one game plan is because instead of trying to do this thing where maybe one unit or one variation of the team shares the ball and then the other goes to ISO City is because now that we've got both of these individuals back, now that we've got both of these individuals back and locked in place and Kyrie can legally play every game and Kevin Durant is healthy and the both of them are healthy, we have one game plan. And the one game plan with 7-Eleven has always been, 
every single time it has always been. Again, this is pre-Harden, outscore the opponent. That is what we do. That is the game plan. That is what we do, outscore the opponent. Now, we know Kevin Durant can drop 40 at will. We know Kyrie Irving can drop 40 at will. Do you know what that totals up to? Just quick math, 40 and 40, that is 80. So let's say they have all 80 points. You still have to have other people get involved. And how is it that other people get involved, you might ask? You have to run plays. And if you haven't listened to anything I've said over this year and all the times I've screamed at Steve Nash, for not drawing plays, for people <clears throat> trying to excuse the fact that the team has options that they run as if options and looks are plays. No, they're, they're, they're not. They're not. The triangle offense is not a play. You're just running options. Like, I, I, I need people to, to I, like, just, just, just open the settings on 2K if you want. I'll look up some stuff on YouTube. Like, I need people to understand certain things. So Bruce Brown cutting to the paint is not a play. That is an option. That is a look based on ISO. Like, that is, that is how the team is constructed. And the person who changes that is either our point guard, Harden, or I guess Ben Simmons at some point if he ever plays, or the coach. Putting that type of responsibility on Kevin Durant has never been fair. And I've said that on multiple occasions. My beef with Kevin Durant has never been the fact that he can't do everything. I've never put him on bronze level ever. I've, I've, I've never done that. I've never expected that from KD. My issue has always been... I feel as if when you ask him to do more than score... There are times where it's successful. It, 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 it's real hit or miss. And that doesn't mean Kevin Durant is a bum. That just means he's not that guy. He's amazing. He's incredible. His offensive talent and his ability to get other people involved is currently better than everyone in the league. But that's not his job. And asking him to do more is not fair to him in the slightest. We are asking him to be the coach now with no, and, and again, I keep bringing up Harden because it's so much more than we just lost another possible 40 points, which if we're keeping it a thowie, if no one else were to score and we had all three of them, we're not even having this conversation, but that's neither here nor there. We didn't just lose his alleged scoring whenever he felt like scoring. We lost a coach. And the reason why I was excited for the Ben Simmons trade was because we got another coach back. Now, I'm not familiar with Ben's work like that because I don't care about Philly. But allegedly on paper, this man is supposed to be an amazing point guard. I'm sure we'll play him at the four, but you know what I mean, a point forward. But with him not being out there, we go to the exact same thing. In the last couple of games, I've made it very clear that if Kevin Durant is capable of being God every night, then it doesn't matter. If Kyrie Irving is full-time and that combined with Kevin equals just like Naruto and Sasuke, uh, Jeff Hardy, Matt Hardy, um, uh, Goku, Vegeta, whatever combo you want to throw out there, right? Homoda, Madoka, like whatever combo you want to throw out there. Cool. But when it doesn't work, because the other team is playing team ball, and we're basically running two on five the whole night, it's not going to work every night. You might be able to ISO your way against maybe a team with no chemistry, like the 76ers, you might be able to ISO your way past the Celtics, who outside of Tatum is trash. I don't know who needs to hear that, but they are trash outside of Tatum. Jalen Brown's okay, but the dudes are trash. I don't know who needs to hear that. But that is not going to work against top-tier teams. Because I was, as I was watching the game, I was sitting there trying to figure out, why are we having so much trouble getting past the Grizzlies with no jaw? But I... I realized very quickly, it was me. It was me all along. 
I had the Grizzlies messed up. It was me. Do you know the Grizzlies have the second best record in the entire league? And then I said, oh, this is a top five team. And then I remembered how Brooklyn fares against the top tier teams. And I was like, oh, I saw it gonna work this time. And at some point, you would think the head coach of the team would realize that. You, you, you would think the head coach of the team would try something different. You would think the head coach of the team would say, hmm, we've got Kevin Durant getting slaughtered. Because again, everyone just fouls him to death and no one ever calls a whistle or anything. You've got Kyrie Irving who literally can't be playing any better. I don't have Lamarcus Aldridge. Hmm. I don't have Ben Simmons. Hmm. I don't have Seth Curry. Hmm. If only we had one more person to throw out there who has big game experience, is a multi-time all-star, was the face of a car company for 10 years. James Johnson, go out there. You got it. You'll, you'll be the third wheel. You'll be the Chris Bosh. We'll be fine. Against the second best team in the league. While Blake Griffin collects dust on the bench. I haven't said anything at all. All about Steve Nash and his decision making. And y'all know how I feel about Blake. You give Blake like five minutes in the last game. He's hitting threes. He's dunking the ball. He's got the post-ups. He's got the assist. He's got the bully balls. He is raring to go. But no. No, 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 no. It's James Johnson time! If you at this point have any confidence in Steve Nash, we are not friends. We are not affiliates. We're not living on the same planet because you same individuals who defend this man were defending him on games where Kevin Durant or Kyrie has 60 or 50. That is not good coaching. That just means your player is God. And when I say things like we're running out of time, I don't mean specifically because of the player's contracts. I'm saying because they won't come back. You think Blake Griffin's going to sign up for another year of this? Playing behind James Johnson? So I keep saying this is our last chance. This is our last year. It has to get done now. The championship has to be won now. And whether it's Kyrie not getting vaccinated, derailing the entire season, whether it's James Harden getting pissed and booted and then getting himself traded and sent other places, whether it's Kevin Durant being hurt all the time, like it's 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 a domino it's it's all it's a domino effect this whole season whether it's Bruce Brown not being able to be utilized correctly because you have Harden out there who doesn't understand what Bruce Brown does, whether it's Claxton being in and out of the lineup constantly, whether it's not using LaMarcus Aldridge properly, whether it's not using um, Blake Griffin at all, all the questionable decisions that we had, you had an opportunity to sign anyone in free agency you wanted. Anyone. You had a chance for anyone, and you went and signed Drogic. While we cannot blame this all on Steve Nash, Steve Nash does not go blameless. If you feel overwhelmed by this video, if you feel like I went from point A to B to C to D, to, that's because normally I'll just focus on one thing per game. There are so many things going left this season. We could spend two 
hours talking about it game to game. But tonight, I wanted to show you how everything connects to Steve Nash. And while I may not speak on it every video, it's because I don't have time. I don't have time to tell you everything that went wrong in a game and Steve Nash is insane. We don't have enough time. These videos would be an hour long every night. Is it nice that Kyrie Irving is back? Yeah. Do I think they played well? Absolutely. Does it matter that we lost to the second best team in the league? No, not really. But every game is a must win. And while I think it's definitely best that we check off the Kyrie chapter, even though I still blame him for 80% of what happened this year. While we check off the box of the Kyrie chapter, and we are putting a lot of weight on looking at what's going on with Ben Simmons, let us not forget that even if Ben Simmons comes back next game, he won't, but even if he comes back next game, and everyone's healthy, Everyone's out there. Marcus comes back. Seth Curry's ready to go. If the whole team is healthy, I want you all to remember one very, very, very important thing. Because even though I don't bring it up every video, I just want everyone to remember that even if everything goes right, everyone's healthy, Steve Nash is still the coach.